Mel tell you she was going? She had a friend that got hit by a bus. Somebody went. She, she went to school with. She wanted to see her friends from school. Okay. Her friend from school got hit by a bus? Somebody from school got hit by a bus, and she knew the sister and some other friends. Okay. And she was having a lot of seizures the days prior. And, uh, like, I mean, multiple seizures, three, four of them a day. She was stressed out. She wasn't sleeping. The neighbors upstairs, they moved furniture around at, like, 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, vacuum. And so... When she tells you she's going to go visit a friend who got hit by a bus, um, did she tell you like where that is, like where she's going to go to visit? Like, is she going to Peterborough? Is she going to Guelph? Like, I understood it was towards Scarborough Way. Okay. Okay. And when the like when the the vehicle was going towards when it, from out of the drive was going westbound towards okay. Concord. Okay. And did. Had, had she had she spoke to you about this friend who was hit by a bus? As far as she showed me an article in the newspaper the night before. Okay, and on the on the day in question when she left, then would you have known who that friend was by name? No, no. I thought the girl's name was Jen to begin with. But okay, that she was going to go visit. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know what her name was offhand. Okay, and today do you know who's, what her I, name is? I know I don't. And um, the neighbor was trying to help me to see who was hitting a bus, killed by a bus. And right. They were trying to look through yearbooks that were at the house. Right. Uh, Mel's yearbooks? Yearbooks and things from school to see if we could match up a name from somebody hit by a bus. Okay. The name of somebody that was in school with her. Okay. So Mel leaves and we're, I think, in the late morning or so? It was 10, 10 30. Okay. What time do you think you found her phone? It wasn't too long after. Because she found five it and I kept the couch up and was looking at the dust cover on her knees. So. I don't know the exact time. Sure. But, uh. Because we've had stuff that's fallen down the couch before. By supper time that night? By like 6 o'clock would you have found it? Oh, yeah. Earlier than that? Yeah. Okay, a lot earlier than that? A fair bit earlier than that, I believe. Okay. It's been a couple hours. Okay. Easily, if it was even that long. And... So she tells you she's going away for a couple of days. And what's the reason she tells you she's leaving for a couple of days? She told me she wanted to see her friends. She was stressed out from the noise upstairs. Our dog was going nuts. A new guy moved in the building. He's got a Pomeranian. And he walks up and down the driveway, and his dog shits on everybody's lawn. And our dog just about, with litter, was trying to get through the window. Okay. There's two, two dogs in the building she didn't like. Okay. There was that dog and a pug, and she was going just ballistic the last few days. Okay. And not only was getting really stressed out over it, and she was having seizure after seizure after seizure. Okay. So, she tells you she's going to her friend's house for a visit for how many days? A couple is what she told me. A couple. Okay. And to your best memory, when do you first start going through her phone and sending people messages uh, from her phone? Later that day. Later that Especially day. Especially where she went. Okay. Because I wasn't sure where she went to. Okay. So. Because I remember speaking with. A, it was a friend of hers. I spoke to her son. To see if she mentioned to him exactly where she was going because he may. So here's where I start to have some difficulty. The investigators tell me that there's no activity on Mel's phone on the 6th of May. So let's say we got the dates mixed up and she left on the 6th of May. Mm -hmm. 
you're saying later that day you were on her phone sending a message to people. I, I believe it was her phone. It was either her phone or my phone. Okay. I had both phones. Okay. Because you just said it was on her phone. I, I thought sure. about it. Well, I, did. I was using her phone afterwards okay. when I found it because my payment date came up. Yeah. Because I was trying to make calls on my phone, so, and then when mine shut off, then I used her version. So... And do you eventually contact a friend of Mel's on her on Mel's phone? And do you remember I her name? No, I don't remember her name. Okay. What do you remember about that conversation? There was multiple texts back and forth. Sure. And you remember? Well, there was a friend of hers from school, and I was asking her if she'd seen Mel on me. Said she was dressed and she was trying to get away. She wanted to see somebody that got hit by a bus. Her sister. Mm -hmm. And it was like multiple, multiple, multiple texts. Okay. I had to working and working and doing some landscaping work while I was texting, texting my lady. And I believe I was also t also talked to her son John. Right. So, do you remember um, having a conversation with this lady and telling her uh, that some girl said she saw her in Oshawa yesterday, the day before? Yeah, somebody did say that. Now, who's this somebody? Because I would think that would be something pretty I, important. I think that was the the gen. Remember that saying? I remember the name Jen. Okay. I'm pretty sure that's... So, sorry, are you saying about. there was a text from somebody that said, I think I saw her in Oshawa the day before, or was it someone that told you this in person? No, it was a message on my phone. On your phone? Through a friend. Yeah. Through a friend of yours or a friend we of We know a lot of people out in Oshawa. Okay. And it was somebody, uh, an acquaintance, I guess, that they saw her. So, there. at that point, who would have known in Oshawa that she was missing? Well, at that point, we didn't think she was missing. No, exactly. So how is it that someone's I, messaging you to say, I think she was seen in Oshawa, if nobody knows I'm, she's missing? Because I just saw her pull out of the driveway, and she didn't give me a death note as to where she was going. Which, normally, if she went away, she would tell me, you know, okay, I'm at Michelle's. She would call me after and say, I'm at okay. Michelle's. You know, I'll be here for a couple of days. Okay, so... And I didn't have a death note as to where, where right. she got to. I just know she went at the house. She told me what she you was. thought she was going to Scarborough. What, what I thought she was doing, but I didn't know whether she went somewhere before. Okay. Or you know went there and went somewhere after. Okay. I was just looking for a definite to basically pin her down as to where she was. Right. So. Because after what happened in the robbery, I mean, you know, she didn't make it. Out, she didn't go to the house a whole lot by herself. And. One of the fellows was seen right up the street from the house. Okay. I was concerned as to, you know, where did she go right away? I mean... And you're telling me that uh, who reaches out to who for this information about this girl being... Uh, sorry, about uh, Mel being seen in Oshawa. So, so how does that information end up coming to you? It was through somebody that I was talking to it that way. Okay. Talking to you by text? I believe it was a no, it was a phone call. Okay. Okay. And at this point, uh, what day do you think that was? Not long out, like with, within the next 24 hours. Okay. So my the part I'm struggling with, Jeff, and I want you to try and follow my understanding mm -hmm. is she tells you she's leaving for two or three days, she's stressed, she needs to get away, whatever the case may be, and you're getting a message or a phone call from somebody less than 24 hours later saying she's been spotted in Oshawa. So, because I, I asked a lot of people. Even though she wasn't missing? Mm -hmm. Okay. Even though you thought she went to Scarborough? Well, because after I didn't know she was in Oshawa. Right. I was just trying to contact anybody. I knew to see where did she go. 
Okay, so you reached out to somebody I did. initially to ask them, and they said... I reached out to a few people to ask okay. them. Okay, who did you reach out to? I talked to her son. Um, okay. A few different people. I tried to call Michelle. Whose phone were you using to make um, these reach I was, outs? I, was, I used my phone quite a bit. Okay, do you remember who you called her son on? Was it your phone or her phone? Um, I believe it might have been my phone. And I know she has two sons, so which son? John. John. Okay. Do you remember John? telling John that, I told John that she, for, she didn't have her phone. She left her phone at the house. I remember right. telling John that, and I said, I'm just trying to narrow down where she went to. Right. Because she left in the car, and I didn't recognize the vehicle. How do you know she left in the car? They, well, I saw the car at the end of the driveway. Right. When, Did you ever see when her she went to get I don't. I didn't actually see her get get into the car, but I mean it was 15, 20 seconds from the time she went out the door and where the where the vehicle was. It was right by the sidewalk. Because this is the first time I've heard you say because she, she got in the car and I didn't recognize the car. I don't think you've ever said that yet. I told the I I told uh, the officers before. You told the officers about the car. Blue, there's a blue yes, car. Yes, you did tell the officers yeah. that absolutely. But you just told me. Because she got into a car and I didn't know whose car it was. Well, that's I figured that's the car she got in. She, it, for her to leave, okay, so she would like there was no taxi there. That's the first. The I only heard. vehicle I seen. That's the, the first old, I heard about her getting in that car. The only vehicle I saw was a blue car. Okay. So I figured that must be the vehicle that she got into. Okay. So. And I had a towel around my waist. That was right coming out the door with a towel on. Cause I was just trying to narrow it down as to as to who was giving her a ride. So on was it somebody we knew, or somebody I didn't know, or was it a taxi? So you have a conversation with who you think is Jen? Did you say? I thought her name was Jen, but who I, told I you that, that even though you called her, you don't know you don't know her her name? I just, well, I was just contacting everybody I could possibly contact. Okay. That there was any any kind of. So how would you, if you called any, her yeah. number, you, like how would you call a number and not know who you were going to get on the phone? It wasn't, so, it wasn't her I got on the phone. I was calling, so I called other friends in Oshawa. So when you called And I was that, just told that this, there's a, a lot of people in Oshawa that tend to hang it together by where we used to live. Okay. And somebody just said that they thought they saw Melanie down there. And, and I thought sorry, it was Jen thought she thing. saw Melanie? This person you think is Jen? Yeah. Okay, and did you speak directly with Jen? No. You're getting that third hand from Just who? Just third hand. From who? Um, if your fiancé is missing and you're reaching out, I assume you would know who you were talking to. <coughs> I think that's fair. A fair assumption. Uh, it's, it was... It's a girl she hangs up with Chucky. Um, I don't know what her name is. Joanne, I believe. Okay. And she you, hangs up with a friend of hers. And you think you used your phone to make that call? I believe so. Okay. If you didn't use yours, does that mean you, you would have used Mel's phone, or would you have borrowed someone else's phone? It would have been one, mine or hers. Okay. It should have been one of the others. Okay. And I had both phones in my pocket after I found her. And you think that was the day after she left? Yeah. So if we think she left the 7th, it would be the 8th. If we think she left the 6th, it would, would be, be the, the day seven. after. Yeah, okay. And... What time of the day do you think you called that person? Was it daylight, dark? It would have been daylight. Okay. I wouldn't know the exact time. Cause I was up mowing. Okay. I was mowing on Cochran Street. You are at work? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when I was that, and the, the text with the other girl, I was, it was all when I was at work. Because generally I go at about 8, 9 o'clock in the morning. So okay. Just before dark. Yeah. So... Okay, I mean, I do lose track of time. Fair enough. Yeah. I just try to get as many done as I can possibly get yeah. in the time I have. Okay. Um, does the name Lisa Fisher mean anything to you? I've heard the name. Okay. And I think that might be who, who got hit by the bus, possibly. Okay. Do you remember texting her from Mel's phone? I think that may have been who I thought.
friend of hers from school was. Okay. Okay. So I know, in fact, that you did text her. No, it's quite a few texts. Yeah, and I know, in fact, you texted her several times. And I thought she would know her because I thought that was one of the people that Melanie was going to see. So this is, and I'm just, just kind of going to build some things up here for you. Okay. Because it's important you understand where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I'm trying to give you the benefit of the doubt, and, it, and it's being very difficult knowing what I know. And again, uh, I just want to get to the bottom of this mm -hmm. for her sake. Yeah. For her sake. So do I. I didn't love her because I didn't know her. But uh, I want to do the right thing for somebody that can't speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you can appreciate that. Yes, I can. Absolutely. And I would honestly like to know what happened to Well, I'm going to okay. And I, and I think you do. Or in fact, I know you know what happened. But I'm, I'm going to just go through some things here and let you try and explain some things to me. Uh, because I believe in giving you an opportunity. Okay, and I will try to explain this as yeah, as I can. Yeah, I will try and give you every opportunity I can because uh, I want to be completely fair mm -hmm. uh, to you. Hold on. Four or five. 
have text on there. And okay. Didn't quite register. So, was there any point that you got any kind of satisfaction from talking to Lisa, where it was you, you had learned something about where Mel was, or, or was there any point that you received any information that okay, she's safe, she's here, even though you may not have talked to her. But was there any? I didn't get a definite no that she was there. Okay. Did you get a definite she was anywhere? No. Did anyone give you any indication that she's she's here, she's here? Did you get any phone calls, anything to indicate? The most I got was well from uh, Dwight, from Marty, and one of the neighbors saying that she wanted to check into a rehab program. That's what, and that that was something she was looking to do, and she spoke to me about it before. Okay. She was supposed to see counselors after her robbery. Okay. And she was saying, being all this medication, it's no life to live. She said she wanted to get away from it. Okay. And she mentioned that to them, and I figured, okay, well, that's maybe that's that's actually where she went. Okay. And I wasn't hearing from her. And the fellow we sure. we know went into one. Sure. And he says you're not allowed to contact people from it. You know, they give you clothes to wear there and all that. And I'm sitting there, it's like, okay, well, she wasn't that concerned about her phone. And it just, it it fit together. Sure. You know, I'm hearing this from multiple people. So... And she mentioned that to me, and I was like, okay, well, maybe that's what she did do then. Okay. So, um, you're using a combination, I think, instead of your phone and her phone to reach out to people to kind of find out where she is. Fair enough. Um, did you ever get any phone calls or text messages on your phone from anybody to give you any indication where she was? I gave you any idea where no, she was? No, nothing definite, no. Okay, when you say nothing definite, what what did you hear that, that either gave you information or, or... Well, about the rehab. Okay. Mark, you mentioned that. Okay. And Dwight's mentioned that. Okay. Uh, he's mentioned in person as well as in, on the phone. Okay. And uh, even one of my customers, Melanie, was over there. She gave me a hand. I was doing uh, like a yard cleanup. Okay. And yeah, she was thinking the same thing. She says, you know, can and I mentioned to the officers, is it possible to check in like places like Cam H and mm -hmm. some of these places to see if she's in there? Right. Okay. I just want to make sure I've got it straight that at no point, and you correct me if I'm wrong, did you ever get information that Mel was either visiting a friend, not either not, effect. you might not know the name, but someone, has anyone ever told you she was here, she was there? No specific uh, answer, no. Okay. And I think um, that may really work. Were people calling you with information, or was it more you calling people to ask questions? It was more calling me people to ask questions. You calling people to ask questions? Okay. Yeah. Did you ever receive um, any any phone messages from people who you didn't know who are offering you information? Like maybe like a complete stranger where I guess, you know, if you got a contact in your phone and you call it Bell, then... Bill calls, Bill's number shows up. Mm -hmm. But if it's someone who's not in as your contact, it's just a number that shows up, yeah. unless it's blocked. Did you get any of those that weren't contacts that showed up, either phone messages, uh, text messages from an unknown number that not gave you that some I, indication? Not that I could think of. Do you think you'd remember if your fiance's missing and someone's saying, hey, she's here? Nobody said she was here. No. Okay. That I would have remembered. Okay. If she said she was here, my first question would have been where. Okay. Okay. So here's where I started to have some problems, okay? And I said I'd be up front with you. And, uh, again, I want to give you every opportunity to have credibility. Jeff, please believe me when I tell you that. And so I want to talk a little bit about, well, I'll talk about a couple of things. First I want to talk about is, um, You know, when, when, when police launch an investigation like this, uh, because everyone wants to do the right thing for the person that can no longer speak for themselves, mm -hmm. uh, would it be no different if something had happened to you or your family member or whatever the case may be? 
we kind of pull out all the stops. And, mm -hmm. and one of the things we do and have the ability to do that still helps us with investigations is we look at cell phone records. Yeah. And uh, what do you know about cell phone records and as far as how they could assist law enforcement and things like that? What do you know about that? You mentioned you watch CSI. And there would be some kind of record of text messages, things like that, I'm sure. Sure. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So records not like a num numbers out numbers in kind of thing. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there's things like that. So you can get uh, messages off a phone. Sometimes things are deleted, but you can still get them. Yeah. I think Eric mentioned that to you. Mm -hmm. Because there were some messages from the fellow Rob that I did. That you deleted, yeah. Because he just leaves, I don't know if you've seen them, he uh, leaves like a little two, three word Eric text. mentioned that to me. And it's just yeah, like meaning. Basically meaningless little things. You know, he'll put two or three words, and then another two or three words, and another two or three words, and he just texts and texts and texts. And so I've had to tell him, I was like, "You want to talk to me? Call me, because I'm not going to read 20 sure. texts to try to get an idea of, sure. of something." Sure. So the thing about phone records, and, and quite often they're helpful to the police in these types of investigations, because, mm -hmm. like you said, they show text messages. They can show the actual text conversation. Well, not just the times in and out, but the actual yeah. content of the messages. They can show incoming phone call times. They can mm -hmm. show outgoing phone call times. They can, uh, you know, if you take it one step further, you can get uh, locations off of uh, what they call towers. So every every mm -hmm. phone provider has cell towers. We see them all over the landscape. Uh, when we're out in the country, sometimes they're not as obvious in the city. They might be on a building top or something. But yeah. And, um, you know, that generally can triangulate a phone to a certain location mm -hmm. based on towers, if yeah. that makes sense to you. So uh, if, you, if you make a phone call, that signal goes out to a tower, mm -hmm. the closest tower. Now, there are circumstances when that tower is overloaded with calls, it bounces to the next closest one. That can happen. Mm -hmm. But as a rule, you can triangulate things and whatnot. So yeah. there's a lot of, obviously... Uh, beneficial things for law enforcement mm -hmm. uh, that come from cell phones and cell phone towers. So mm -hmm. that's good. And one of the things we look at in cases like this is what we, we try to look at the, the phones of the people that are involved. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I know they've been looking at Mel's phone mm -hmm. uh, because uh, that's the right thing to do. Yeah. And I'm sure uh, in the future they're going to be looking at other phones. Yeah. I'm sure of that. Uh, sometimes they get uh, phones through uh, consent mm -hmm. to look at them. Sometimes they have to get what's called judicial authorization, meaning mm -hmm. they have to explain to a judge why they would require um, kind of something similar to information warrant, about like a, that phone. Like a warrant, like a search warrant. Exactly, yeah. exactly. You're, yeah. you're, you're they got that at the apartment, and it was, you know, here's the keys, you don't need it. Yeah. Yeah, so sometimes they need that um, and to, cr to dot their I's and cross their T's. And, and the information we get from that when we do those things mm -hmm. is often very helpful. Mm -hmm. And it often moves investigations forward. So that's that's a good thing. Some of that's already been done. And again, I'm not the lead investigator. I'm mm -hmm. Eric and, and his partner, Todd, are the lead investigators. I'm, you know, and again, my role here is simple. It's to find out the truth. Mm -hmm. Not to find anyone guilty of anything, but to find out the truth. So, one of the things that I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around, Jeff, uh, again, I want to be honest and give you a chance to explain, and, and, and um, you know, uh, I believe in giving everybody a chance to explain. One of the things that I'm having a hard time with here is a conversation that you had on Mel's phone with this lady that we know to be Lisa Fisher. Mm -hmm. So it's clear to me that, uh, you know, because I know, because I have it in front of me, mm -hmm. that you reached out to her initially. Mm -hmm. It was a case of you sending a message through Mel's phone to a number that was either in her phone or a contact name, I don't know. Yeah, it was a number that was in the, in the phone. Right. So I imagine it was somebody that she contacted recently. Right. So, do you remember if there was a name associated with that, or just a number? I don't remember the yeah name in particular. Oh, okay. I remember that there was she had contacted them previously. Okay. So I thought that would be a good, good one of the good places to start. You know, contacting people right. that she contacted last. Right. So, in by all accounts, 
you know, I know you reached out to her um, on May the 8th at 2.51 in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Have you seen Melanie? Mm -hmm. um, and you obviously, should, do you remember what she responds to you? No, no, Okay, she said, what? Where's Mel? And you talk to her, you have an ongoing conversation with her about her going away for a couple of days to relieve stress, mm -hmm. about having seven seizures in 48 hours. Yeah. And then, of course, a logical question for the person at the other end of the phone is, who's this? We're talking about Mel on Mel's phone. Mm -hmm. Who's this? And you tell her, it's yeah. Mel's fiance, Jeff. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, and um, so that conversation is on May the 8th. And you, you continue to send her messages into the evening. Mm -hmm. uh, fair enough. You know, and I believe there's some calls to her son also. Expressing some concerns, yeah. Well, I'm just going to talk about Lisa for now. Mm -hmm. um, then you um, send her a message on the 9th in the afternoon saying about, I haven't heard from her yet about this girl in Oshawa, but I've apparently seen her. And that there's a phone number on the phone from a Toronto Scarborough number that she was talking to the night before, and I think that's the one you were referring to. That was a number I didn't recognize. It was a 416 number. Okay. And was that associated with that guy that you said? Possibly. R Rashad, I wasn't or? sure. Okay. I was trying to figure was it out. Was that the same, what you were referring to earlier when you were talking about? Was that Scarborough number? That might have been, yeah. I believe that might have been uh, okay. somebody that she was talking to, yeah. Okay. And you make a point of telling... Lisa, who I, if they knew who it was, or for somebody who I take it you've never met and don't know. No, I was just told that if somebody that if she was seeing friends that she went to school with her whole life and has known for twenty something years. You know, she went to school, to elementary school and high school with. Right. So you take the time to say to Lisa that um, she's probably with them. That four one six number. Mm -hmm. uh, she needed to get away. She's too stressed from everything. And the apartment's clean and take care of the dog. I hope to hear from her soon. So I know where she went and everything's good. Okay, fair enough. So then you send a message to Lisa, which I'm really struggling with. Do you remember what you said to Lisa? No, not offhand. You told her that you heard from Mel, specifically, that you heard from her, and she told me she's at her friend's cottage. I got it right in front of me, Jeff. I got it right in front of me. I don't remember that. Well, I remember saying that. Well, I, I, I thought she may have went to a friend's no, cottage. No, no, no. I'm going to be pretty specific here, John, or Jeff, sorry. And this is where it comes down to credibility, and I want to try and give you some credibility here, but you really need to help me understand this one. You tell... Lisa Fisher, that she left a message on my cell phone that I lost. I checked my messages and it was from her. She's with friends at a cottage. So there can't be any misunderstanding about that text. And that text we have, no one else had her phone. You told me you, that was you, that you were using your phone and you were using her phone. You're telling Lisa Fisher that you got a message from her she left a message on my cell that I lost. I checked the message, and it was from her. She's with friends at a cottage. You specifically told her that. So that has never come up. You really need to help me understand that one. You sent a message out on May the 9th at 9, 10 in the evening saying, I heard, basically, I heard from her. She's at a cottage. So, Lisa, I assume, will stop worrying now because she's hearing from Mel's fiancé that Mel's gotten, finally gotten in touch with you and that she's at a cottage. So, help me understand that. You need to explain that because that is one of the issues that is a real detriment to your story. I'm not going to lie to you, Jeff. You're telling Lisa that you heard from Mel and that's never come up. So help me understand what happened that night. There's only one logical explanation to this for me. And you, you, 
you explain that one to me, and I'll tell you what my explanation is. I'm not bullshitting you. It's right there. I can't make this stuff up. I can't introduce no, I'm not bullshit evidence that. to you. I, I just need you to tell me. One of the places that she she mentioned going and wanted to see was her friend Snorky's cottage. Great. That's no problem for me. Yeah. But you sent a message saying she left a message on my cell. Okay. It was a voicemail, apparently, because she said, I lost the message. And one was from her. She was with friends at a cottage. And my understanding from our interview with Lisa is that she then says, well, great, if she left you a message, you must have her, the number she called from. Call them back. All is good. You'll find, you will you can talk to her. We're really stuck. We're really stuck. I'm you know. kind of stuck here, too, because I well, don't yeah. Well, I know she yeah. talked about going up to her. She did talk about going that's to her. That's fine. Yeah, she talked about it. Yeah. You specifically said, I've heard from her. She's at her friend's cottage. You specifically sent that text. So, again... This one's this one's hard, so I need you to help me, because in the absence of a reasonable explanation, mm -hmm. it makes all that other stuff appear to be a bunch of bullshit. I don't mean to sound rude, but that's where we're at. Phone records can be very helpful in these investigations, Jeff. Mm -hmm. I don't want to assume anything. Can can the records be checked at my phone to see when the message was left? Oh, yeah, they can be checked. Oh, yes, they can be checked. And I would imagine that that's something that the investigators are probably going to do. Mm -hmm. Which brings me to my point that, Jeff, this issue of Mel's death is not going to disappear oh, I know today. That. It's not going to disappear. I'd, l I'd like it to be resolved today. But in the absence of that happening, it's it's going to be you know something that they work on for a long time. Mm -hmm. I I see what you're saying. Logically, Jeff, right? She was like it was. She was three days over to You're Kevin crazy Paul. about her. I love her. I get that. Mm -hmm. You're saying I can't live without her. Uh, she's. You told you told the investigators. She said she was going to go for two to three days. And yeah, there it is. She should have been back Tuesday. She should have been back a couple days earlier. And then, and then, because she's not, I'm going to kill myself. Nope. I can't live without her. I'm going to kill myself. So I can I can analyze that in my own mind too, and I can analyze that in the mind of um, you know people who get paid a lot more money than me and are psychologists and psychiatrists, but. Um, that's Jeff, what working was down. Jeff, it doesn't add up, buddy. And again, I want you to have a bit of credibility here. I want you to be able to fit the jigsaw pieces together that make me understand exactly what happened. Listen, none of none of this uh, none of this is easy for anybody. Uh, her parents are grieving. I know that. Uh, I didn't deal with them personally, but I know the folks upstairs that did. This, this, this information we're getting here goes completely against what you've told the police. It just goes completely against it. This is factual information that's locked in through records, through computers, through cell phones to the second, to the to the sixtieth of that one second. Mm -hmm. There's no doubts about that in time. What you're saying in messages here mm -hmm. is not true. You said, I received a call from Mel, and she told me she's at a cottage. That, you can't, you can't explain that. I've already asked you to. Which, in the absence of an explanation, leads me to believe, I know that the vast majority of what you told the investigators about all this missing person investigation is not true. I understand why you told them it's not true. I'm not I'm not a cold, heartless person. 
I understand that self-preservation thing that I talked about, that when you trip, your hands automatically shoot out. When you're in a really bad situation, you really try to save yourself. And I think that's exactly, I know that's exactly where you are right now. I get that. I completely understand, Jeff. Not because you're a mean, miserable son of a bitch, but something happened in a, in a small window that caused you to snap. And, and that's, the, that's the part that's still great for me, is, is those, that, that little bit of a lead up. But a lot of the things you've told, uh, most of the things you've told the investigators isn't true. And as a man who's lived his life, you know, for the most part, not a bad guy, you need to take a step back, look logically, and realize today your explanation of things doesn't make sense to people. It doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to the investigators. And quite frankly, I don't know if it'll make sense to a judge. And, and that's what I'm telling you. There's explanations about why things happen. We all know the clocks can never be turned back. When shit happens, it's too late. They can't take it back. We can't turn back the hands of time. Mm -hmm. But again, you're in that fork in the road, Jeff, where, you know, we can't change what's happened. And you can go this way, which is the cowardly way, and I'm going to try my self-preservation. Or it's this way, like you told me in the past, you've taken accountability and responsibility for your actions. I have. That's where we're at right now. That's I where we're at right I now. I did not hurt Melanie. I didn't. Jeff, Jeff, doesn't make sense. No, some of it doesn't make sense. And it I completely does. State of mind when I was talking to that's people. Not, that's not. I believe there was a certain period of time through all this. Absolutely, that you weren't I the right very state of mind. Confused. Yeah, problems with my family, etc. I get that. Yeah. I can appreciate that. But you're right. You weren't in the right state of mind. And let's back it up to the sixth and seventh. That's when you weren't in the right state of mind for something like this to happen. Okay, Jeff, I can't be any clearer. The right state of mind, I didn't get the calls about my family until a couple of days later, which is when she shut up or shut out. You didn't get to call your family what? Pardon? When, when I you? found out about my family members, that was a couple of days after she left. Okay. And that's when I realized that she didn't come home, and she said she's not going to come home. But a couple of days later, you're saying you got a message from her and that she's at a friend's cottage. Jeff, think about that. Think about that. Only only one person had those phones during that time. That was you. You had a conversation back and forth with Lisa Fisher. Lisa Fisher's been interviewed. Mm -hmm. And she's talked to us. Mm -hmm. You led her to believe. Mel contacted you, told her she was at a cottage, and all was well. That never happened. That never happened. And when your phone records, if they get traditional authorization for them, will will show, I'm sure, that there's no incoming call. Uh, and they'll check every number that you've received and, and source it and check to see who's called you. Mm -hmm. That will all be done as part of their steps to investigate. I imagine that will. It will. And we're sitting here today with a chance to actually to do the right thing here. And that's why I want to spend time here with you. Because I don't think I'm chasing a, a tail around and around and around like a dog. I know that I'm sitting across from somebody who's scared, who's scared of consequence. I completely get that. I, I totally understand, Jeff. But I'm not here to make this situation any worse for you. I'm merely here to move this forward. So tomorrow's the first day of the rest of your life. You're not waiting for everybody to call you back in, right? That's what I'm hoping for because we need to resolve this for her, right? I mean, I got all kinds of things in here. Yeah, I can show I you. want it resolved. But I then you need to take the right step and put the right foot forward here. You know that I'm absolutely 100% right, Jeff. You absolutely know I am, and I and I'm sitting across from somebody who shook my hand not three or four hours ago mm -hmm. and promised me after they said. They usually tell 85% of the truth. I said, today I need 100. And you shook my hand on that. And I don't know about you, but when I was raised, that meant something by my family, when you shake somebody's hand. And you know you're sitting there, and you're not giving me 100% of the truth. I know you know that, Jeff. I know you know that. So whether i got to offer a, a hand and, and shake your hand again and let's try it again, you know a lot of that is, is going to make you look like you're 
deceitful and not truthful. The investigation is a big machine that keeps rolling. Mm -hmm. and, and, it, and it can do that as long as it wants. Again, I know what my role is in these cases. To give somebody a chance to get some credibility back is one of them. And here we said, to get to the absolute truth for the benefit of everybody involved, including you. Including you. I can't imagine none of this has been easy for you. Uh, you know, the pain's real. Uh, I get it. Um, the bottom line is, yeah, Mel's gone. Uh, you love her, and you're responsible for her being gone. And what happened? I'm not responsible for Jeff. I did not. Jeff. Melanie. I have never even slapped Melanie. Jeff. We've, uh, she's had red marks on her throat. She said you choked her out once because uh, she took the last bump of heroin. I'm telling you, I'm, I can't make this shit up. I'm telling you now. You sitting there and telling me that you've never laid a finger on her? Again, that's not the effect. That again no, is not I've, the truth. I blocked her arm. I'm kidding me before. Sorry? I blocked her arm when she went to whack me with something. That doesn't cause big red blotchy marks on her neck. Come on. Uh, again, I don't... Uh, what happened back in the past, and every relationship has its ups and downs, I get that. I don't want to get sidetracked by incidents of domestic violence and whatnot that, that happened in the months past. We're talking about May 6th, May 7th, about what happened to Mel, where she ended up, the exact place she ended up, and her final resting place. That's what we're talking about. And what I really want to do is, with you, go through some of that information and share some things. But, I, but I'm not giving everything to you because I know you know some things. And you can help give me some things. Jeff, I'm not sitting here trying to bullshit you. So, you know, my question to you now really is, you know, was it a spur of the moment thing, or was it something that was a build up? Like again, I don't want to put words. Or was it something else? I didn't hurt. I really didn't. Jeff. Jeff, take a step back. I mean, if I did, it, you, you went through everything in mind. There would be physical evidence. There would be other things. There Jeff. would be witnesses. I have never touched her. Jeff, take a step back. What do you mean there'd be physical evidence? Help me understand. Well, I don't. To whatever happened, I saw stuff getting taken from my apartment and everything else. I mean, I'm sure everything's been tested and stuff. Well, I can tell you when they and there would be some sort of evidence in a situation like this, Jeff. What happens is, as an abundance of caution, they seize a lot of things in these cases because they're not sure what's going to be important or not. So, you know, they write they write for judicial authorization. They include all kinds of things that could be related. And they seize them. That's what they do. Okay. So, um, you know, when you say th there's something about physical evidence, I'm not exactly sure how you worded it. Well, I mean, I did not do anything to Melanie. Something to hurt her. There would be evidence on something. Like what? I don't know. Well, you remember back. I don't not even know what the cause of death was. When you say physical evidence. I'm not sure. What, like, explain what you mean. You mean like blood splatter on a tool or something? Is that what you anything. mean? Anything. DNA, blood splatter, anything. Okay. So if there's any kind of wrongdoing with something. Sure. Why would, why would there not be indications of something, you know? Well, there's lots of reasons why there's not. And I can, uh, you know, I'll tell you a little bit about that. Uh, let's talk about time frame. Let's talk about um, when Mel was last seen and when Mel was found. It was when Mel was found. What's your, you know, uh, do you know the date she was found? No, I don't know the date she was found. It was June 2nd. Was it was June 2nd. Two weekends ago. It was June 2nd. And you've reported, you've reported the date that she was missing as May 7th. Sorry, that the last time you saw her was May 7th, is what you said. So, it, you know, in my math, that's just shy of four weeks, mm -hmm. right? So... Um, I don't need to get graphic, but just put your mind to that in four weeks. Just put your mind to that. That is all I can say. And you, know, you know, what road am I going down when I say that? I'm not sure. Well, I think there 
everything that was in, like, you know, everything from the apartment and everything else was there prior. Right. And hasn't moved since. Right. So, I mean, right. you would think that, yeah, like if something happened at the apartment or something, there would be, would have been some sort of physical evidence. There's neighbors, people across the driveway, and you would have seen the two of us leave together. Or whatever, you, not, whatever was well, going on. Do you think that every time two people leave an apartment together, that people notice it and make note of it? You, after saying to me yourself that, well, I didn't know something was going to happen, I didn't keep track of times. No. Do you think your neighbors keep track of times and when they see people leave? I'm sure you guys were seen leaving that apartment dozens and hundreds of times in the last few years, wherever long you've lived in that building. Mm -hmm. It's just not noteworthy when somebody goes out. I get that. That's, that doesn't shock me that nobody took note of that. Of course not. But um, let's let's not lose sight of the fact that a whole bunch of stuff, just this stuff that we've gotten so far, doesn't make any sense. And I know that there's more coming. I, I, I know that because the investigation is moving forward. And again, um, I know what the end result of everything is. The end result is that Mel's not here. Oh, believe me, I know that. Yeah, I know you, and I believe me, I know you know that. I do know you know that. And I know My you whole life has changed because of this. Ever, Jeff, I know you know it. Because I know you know so much more than what you're telling me. And I don't know more than what I'm telling you. Jeff, I really don't. you're almost a... And I would never want you to take ownership for something that you haven't done. This isn't about me uh, wanting you just to tell me what I want. It's so much not that. This is about me wanting you to realize that the last four or five weeks have no doubt, almost six weeks, I think, yeah, almost six weeks, have no doubt been a tornado for you. Just in that time, y your partner's gone, you've attempted suicide, and... Uh, you're out now um, dealing with the investigators. That's all in the span of six weeks. On top of what you told me about your family members, which I will take at face value that you're telling me the truth about that. I don't I know. It can be checked into. Okay, good. Well, everything can be checked into, and that's the beauty about investigations. Yeah. Everything can be checked into. So, if you truly love her, like you tell Eric you did, or do, and like you told Kelly you do, and like you told I do, and I always will. But I also know that in relationships where emotion takes over from logic, and things happen spur of the moment, uh, and next thing you know, someone's lights have been turned out, uh, it can set in place a whole sequence of events that can just start this whole snowball of falsehoods and untruths. And that's what's happened here. And it's gone on for six weeks. And I think the time for it to be set straight is today. I'm sitting here. I think we got a good thing going. I'm not trying to get you to say anything other than the truth here. I only want us to talk about the truth in this room. I can't stress that. The truth, I did not hurt Melanie. And that is the truth. Jeff, Jeff, stop and listen to what you're saying. Stop and look at everything and take a step back. I get it. I get the self-preservation that I do. But the truth it's is... It's not self-preservation because I really couldn't give a shit what happens to me. Well, my, life is, my life is completely screwed. Well, I, I agree that things like, are starting to spiral for Everything I love in life you. is gone. Well, you know what? Like, I'm looking at sitting in a one-bedroom in White Oaks apartments now because of all this, like... Jeff? A shithole. Jeff? <laughs> Dog's gone. My fiance's gone. Apartment's gone. Jeff. Yeah, things are bleak. I mean, I can't pretend that things aren't bleak for you. I get that. And you know, some of those things are uh, beyond my control. Absolutely. Uh, but bleak or not, the bottom line is this issue today. This issue with Mel. The whole reason you came in today. It needs to be. It needs to be resolved the right way. And again, I only want the truth in this room.
and it's a hell of a place to end up. And I really, 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 really think that eight years with somebody, highs and lows, and you were there for her through the worst times of her life. When she got robbed, she's got, uh, you know, plates in her face and whatnot, I think in her jaw and, mm -hmm. and all that. You were there for her yes. for the worst times of her life and probably for some of her best times, I would imagine. I, I truly believe that. And again, when we're talking about love, we talk about passion, when we talk about emotion, we're naive to think that sometimes in the right mix of circumstances, of uh, uh, if you want to throw in a dose of jealousy or a dose of uh, addiction or a dose of this or that, sometimes it's a recipe for something awful to happen. And it doesn't necessarily mean it's planned, it just happens. And um, if it's a combination of all those things, but... Again, let's not lose sight of, of what's important here. Credibility for you, the love of your life, ends up down at the lake, undiscovered, for a few weeks. I'm not the one to put it there. You spent a lot of time, no doubt, wondering... When's she going to be found? When's she going to be found? When's she going to be found? Well, she was looking for her for weeks. She was found. I was literally looking for her till the day I found out. I was all the way into Pickering, Toronto, and Ajax, putting up missing persons reports, looking yeah. for Melanie. Yeah. I don't know how many you put out. A lot. Yeah. Well, that's what you're telling me. Like I, all the money I had saved for a new bedroom set for us, I spent to buy the, the papers, get them printed, mm -hmm. the lamination. Mm -hmm. And every minute I wasn't working, I was posting them up just so I could bring her home. Jeff. Jeff. I believe you miss her. I believe you're living with regrets. I completely get that. But you can't, I can't let you sit here. And pretend, pretend that you know you're you're the you're the victim of missing your fiance. When through circumstance, through whatever happened, in some brief moment, out of the character, out of your character, whatever the case may be. Again, there's areas that I I have to. I'll be honest with you that I I don't understand. I don't understand. There's areas I don't understand. But there's parts that you do understand. This this part here where you say you got a call from her, Mel, and that she's at a friend's cottage, are you kidding me? That's unexplainable. I, you, I offered you a chance to explain that, and you haven't been able to. Because you didn't get a phone call from Mel saying she's at a friend's cottage. And the, I'm sure the phone records, when they get more phone records, are going to show that. You didn't get that phone call. You told Lisa oh, Fisher that. that message. What? It wasn't a call from her. I never spoke to her oh. live. Okay, no, it was a yeah, voice yeah. message, yeah. Yeah. And Saying, I don't know I'm, I'm at a cottage, I'm okay. And you said to Lisa, I've heard from her, she's at a cottage. Going she's to. okay. She left a message on my cell, she's with friends at a cottage. She her friends at a cottage in outside Bancroft, so she told me. She told me previously she's been up there. Yeah. Jeff, you are feeding one lie into another now. You're feeding one lie into another, and you know it. You're t now, now you're telling me you did re you're saying you did receive a call, a voicemail message. Is that what you're telling What's me? What's that? Are you telling me I d I, that you I, did I, get a call from Mel after she, you're panicked and she's not being found? You finally get a call from her? Are you telling me that's true? Because I can easily... You know, phone records can show that. Are you telling me you got a call from Mel I after she's reporting this? I never got a call. That you got a voicemail message from her on your phone saying, I'm at a friend's cottage. Are you telling me that's true? I don't, no, I don't remember. She said that she thought about going to, up to a friend's snorkies and her friend's cottage. Okay. But, yeah, prior to, prior to her going missing. But are you telling me you got a phone call, phone message from Mel during her missing during her time when you're worried, 
between the six seventh eight and on the ninth you're telling lisa fisher she left me a message she's at a friend's cottage and lisa has a conversation texting back and forth with you about uh well good have you got a message even though you didn't get to talk to her there's the voicemail then your her number will be there call her back help me there's no way you can help me with that the lies are spinning too much they're spinning too much jeff i want you to have some credibility left i want you to to be able to to at least look in the mirror and say okay you know if it's as simple as fucking up then i fucked up if that's what it was then you fucked up but these lies that spin into another lie that spin into another lie i want you to have some credibility man we can't turn back the clock about what's happened here we did not kill the army i didn't what happened i don't what happened? know i don't know you're saying you didn't kill her what happened I just I'm trying to read between that. I, know I didn't kill her. Out. She didn't come home. I'm trying to think of every possible thing as to where she could be. Why is she not coming back home to me? What? Why have I not got a call as to, you know, exactly well, what's going on? Well, you did, according to this, which we know no, is not true. So why is a man no, no. whose fiance is missing telling a, con a concerned girlfriend that it's okay, she's at a friend's cottage, everything's fine? Why is a man who's because I couldn't confirm. She, I can't confirm she was and in the then, And then she could have been at another man's. And then two days later, you're trying to, to kill yourself. Two days after that message, you're trying to kill yourself. Because I can't confirm where she was. So you she want told to me she was coming back home, and all of a sudden she doesn't come back home. She could yeah. be with another man, for God's sake. She could be. She yeah. could be. But she wasn't. But she wasn't. How do we know that? What, what about this, these men that she's, she was calling beforehand and texting? Be, because Live chat from 41, this 416 area code. Because said. I think on May 9th, I think she was already at her resting place. That's why I don't think she was out between May 6th and May 8th or 9th. I don't think she was out with other men. I think she was at her final resting place. That's what I think. Right from my hands. Jeff, stop. Take a step back. I've told you that before. Take a step back. Yes, I don't yes. want you to tell me it's something that's not true. I only want to talk about the truth in this room. Not, it's, no, I'm telling you the truth. It's not from my hands. What happened? I don't know. If it's, listen, if you're sending me a cryptic message here, I'm willing to listen. If it's not at your hands, what happened? I don't know. Well, I don't know why she would be at the lake. Jeff. I don't know whether somebody had to take her medication from her. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And that robbed her or put him on and wanted to hurt her. There's a bit of multitude of things that have come to my mind. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I really don't know. Well, here's what I don't know. I don't know why this happened, specifically. Neither do I. I don't know why this we happened. Were having, before she went away, the two nights, I thought we were sitting there watching movies together. Yeah. Having a great time. Yeah, I, I saw all that. She was, having, and she was having her seizures and really stressed out, and we were trying to make it a point of, you know, watching movies together, spending quality time together. Listen, I, I don't think we can overlook the power of jealousy when we talk about this situation here. I really don't think we can. And I get, I get it, and you've already expressed that you were concerned she may have been stepping out on you. you you've already, ex already so expressed A couple that. people mentioned that. Sure. So I was asking, why would she be gone longer than she's supposed well, to? Well, whether or not your jealousy has legitimate concerns or, or things happened prior to the 7th or 6th that led you to be very jealous, I don't know. Obviously, we know about the thing at the store with Buddy, what he said. But, you know, there's a constellation of factors that can... The, the stars can almost li line up for the perfect store. Um, they really can. And, and again, uh, I don't want to make assumptions about your drug use. You said you backed off, and I, you know, I appreciate that. But 
sometimes the perfect storm, the stars line up for the perfect storm. And whether that's high emotions because of jealousy, high emotions because of an addiction, high emotions because of a lover's quarrel, a combination of all those things happening at the right time and the right situation is, is when shit like, shit like this happens. That's when these things happen. There was no lover's quarrel, well, no problem with it, not even an argument. And I'm not saying something happened at the apartment. I'm not saying she met her end at the apartment. Because I'll be honest with you, I don't know that. I know where she ended up. I know, well, I know what I'm seeing where she ended up. And I know what you've told me uh, doesn't make sense. Certainly a lot of what we're getting from the phone records doesn't make sense. And I'm going to be more than happy here to share with you some more things that don't make sense. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a break here in a second and go out. But Jeff, what I want you to think about is the whole reason. Think about the reason that you came in today. I want you to think specifically about the reason you came in today. And while well, I'm out of the room for a second, I just want you to think about the reason you came in here today. And just give that some serious thought about. And, and I really want to understand where your mind was coming in here today. Um, I, I just wanted, you know, for my own self-interest, as the guy who does this job and has done this uh, six or seven years, I want to understand where your head was coming in today. I really do. Um, I just wanted to try to help. Um, I believe that you wanted to try and help yourself. I do believe that. That you wanted to try and help yourself. I believe that. How is anything helping me? That's on you, because I'm giving you lots of opportunity here I to tell your story. I did not hurt mom. Jeff. I did not take her down there. I would have no way to even to take her down Jeff. there. Jeff. Jeff. Stop. Stop. We're here today. I want this resolved today. I really do. I don't think you're in a good place right now. I don't think you're in a good place emotionally. Um, you know what? It's only a few weeks ago you tried to hurt yourself. I want you to think logically about what's gone on in the last six weeks. I want you to step back and look at it, maybe through, try and picture yourself looking at it through someone else's eyes. Okay? That's all I can ask. I'm going to be back in a second. Do you need another drink? No. Drink of water? No? Do you? Yeah. Okay, one second. I'll just see if Kevin's around and grab you. One second. Yeah.
something I've touched on a couple of times. Everything's still voluntary, you know that. Mm -hmm. You're not being forced to stay here. So you, you understand that? Yeah. You're not under arrest. You can leave at any time. You can call a lawyer at any time. To be perfectly honest, I would like to go home and get my medication. Do you? Yeah. Okay. Because I haven't had it since this morning. Yeah. Okay. It's anxiety medication, and as you can imagine, my anxiety oh, is high right at the moment. Man. I can completely imagine that your anxiety is good. I, um, well, again, I can't keep you here. I, what I was hoping to do was to go over, I have a bunch of other uh, discrepancies that need to be explained, but um, I guess depending on, uh, depending on, um, I guess your level of cooperation is whether or not you come back in or not to talk to Todd or, or Eric, sorry, you met Eric I've, before. I've come in every time you guys have asked. Yeah. I've come in, I've let you search my apartment. I appreciate I, that. I, whether you believe it or not, I did not call it. And, you know, I, I'm sure if there was evidence or something that stated that I did or something, I, I, you guys would have arrested me by now. I mean, I know you have a feeling that I did. So, um, if you want to stay, I'm more than happy to stay. If you want to leave, I can't stop you from leaving. I would like to leave at the moment. You know, yeah. I would like to speak to a lawyer if I'm being blamed for this. <laughs> well, I mean, I have to do something like that to anybody. Why would I stick around? Well, you almost didn't stick around on the 11th. You almost, well, that's you almost joined her, and I don't know if that was an attempt to reunite yourself with, with Mel or what it was. But well, no, because I didn't know that Mel was dead at that point. Well, I just knew she was gone from me. Well, I think you did know, you know. And again, I, I don't want to tip my hat, but anyways, it is what it is. Um, any questions you want to ask me, Jeff? I'm not sure if um, the investigators, if Todd's going to have a chat just briefly out in the hallway with you or out in the lobby, I'm not sure, but if he is, I'll give him time or some time to come down and do that because I suspect they're probably watching our interview live, I think, so. Um, no questions of me? No. Okay. you curious about anything? I still don't know exactly where it was. she was. I would like to go there. Okay. Okay, listen, I appreciate you sticking around as long as you did. 